hi everyone and welcome back to my channel it's jovi k here in today's video we are going to be learning how to court and sew this trendy dripped shirt dress as you can see it has a turn up sleeve and a belt this dress can be styled in different ways you can decide to tie the belt to the back like this you can also tie it to the front or to the side this video is well detailed and self-explanatory if you are interested keep watching and let's get started the measurements and materials needed to make this dress is on your screen guys i will be making use of this three and a half yards of duchess fabric we are starting with the skirt drafting and i will be using these two pattern papers on fold so get two pattern papers and place on fold like this there will be no side seam for the skirt part of this dress so i'll keep one paper aside and take out my half length on this one the half length i am working with is 16 and a half i will take it out like this and mark it as my waistline i will extend the tape rule and mark out my hip line i will mark out the knee line and the full length of the gown please you will have to take out one inch from your half length for this very style i am working with half length of 17 and a half inches but due to the style of our dress it will be 16 and a half after taking out the one inch so guys i'm done marking out the waistline hip line the knee line and the full length plus additional one and a half inches for seam allowance for the half length joining i will leave half inch on the waistline like this for the joining allowance so next i will take my normal waist measurement divided by four and mark it out also mark out my hip measurement divided by four repeat the same on the knee line and also at the hem line and then draft a basic skirt pattern i teach this in most of my videos so if you are new to our channel check out the video card that just appeared at the top right of your screen to watch it or later you check the description box for it so after drafting now we go ahead and cut it out guys because we are closing the back of this dress and leaving the front open for button we will be needing four pieces of this so here is the second pattern I will go ahead and trace it out, making sure that the two are equal. For the button allowance, we are going to be cutting it separate along the line. So guys, after cutting, I will go ahead and transfer the measurement to the second pattern. I have marked the hem line, I will mark out the knee line, the hip line and then the waist line. In order not to alter my measurements, I will move over to this other side and mark out the measurements as well next i will open it up like this and use my pattern ruler to mark out and extend the lines making sure that the lines are straight and equal to avoid mistake after marking and extending the lines i will label this side and also label this other side so that after dividing the pattern i will still know which line is which next i will get my scissors and cut through the center thereby dividing it into two equal parts i will get the second pattern open it and transfer the lines and labels to this other side before cutting so i won't get confused along the line after that i will divide it into two equal parts so now we have four pieces make sure that yours is four two for the front and two for the back i will label these first two as front to avoid mistakes i will take it out and label these other two as the back so guys now you can see what we have here please make sure you are following because this dress has no side seam the next thing i'm going to do is to close the side seam of this gown in order to close the side seam i will be making use of a masking tape to achieve that so make sure to place yours exactly this way one front together with one back each side facing the other side here is my masking tape i will go ahead to join it now this is the very reason i said you should extend your waist hip and knee line so you won't get confused while closing the pattern paper as you can see it's guiding me now because all the lines are aligning as i am closing just push them together to be in the same line and then use the masking tape to close it we will close the waist region after slashing through the hip so after closing this one i will move over to the second pattern and repeat the same thing by closing from the hip line down to the full length after closing both for the waist region in order to close it we are going to slash the hip line from the center front please make sure to slash from the center front to the middle like this do not slash the back now i will move it to the back waist get my tape and carefully close it up 
I am done closing it. I will get the other pattern and also slash it from the hip line on the front pattern. Every slashing will be from the front. I will also move it to the back waist like this. Get the masking tape and close it as well. Like I said, every slash we will do for the style will start from the center front pattern because from the picture, the pleats are along the bottom allowance area. Guys, we've succeeded in closing the sides. So the next thing we are going to do now is to be slashing this paper. But first, I will use my pattern ruler and marker to mark out the lines. Make sure your slashing starts from the center front to the back. Just mark it out the way I am doing in this video. For the spacing, you can use any inches gap you want to use. Here, mine is like two to two and a half inches. It all depends on how you want it. But please, mark it from the center front to the back. From the picture, the drapes are not straight. So, slant your pattern ruler like this, diagonally, while marking out the lines. The lines we are marking now is where I will cut open. That's where we are going to slash. So, after marking out the lines for this first pattern, I will get the second pattern and repeat the same thing. Remember, we had four pieces. Now, we are left with just these two pieces. If you notice, I didn't pass the knee line while marking out the lines. This is because I don't want my draping to pass the knee line. So that's why I stopped here. After marking out the lines, next I will start slashing the paper by cutting through the lines like this. From the center front towards the center back. The back will be closed so do not open the back by cutting or just slash it towards the end but don't cut open please we will just pleat the front there will be no pleating at the back that's why the back will be closed i am done slashing and this is what it looks like as you can see it didn't cross the knee line guys i did not slash the second pattern for now because i can use this one to cut for both the left and the right side of this dress i will keep it aside because we will be using it along the line for the fabric cutting here is three yards of duchess fabric i will advise you use any light fabric for yours so i will go ahead and place it on fold as you can see it's two because it's on fold so if I cut it out now, I will get both the right and the left side of this dress at the same time. I have placed our slashed pattern paper on the folded fabric. So I'll go ahead and spread the papers. The more you spread the slashed papers, the fuller your pleats or gathers around the bottom area. So it's up to you. You can decide to leave 3 inches or 2 inches or more after each slashed paper the lesser you spread the less you're dripping the more you spread the fuller so here i'm just spreading mine like this after spreading i will use my tape and chalk to connect i am marking out like half inch or one inch allowance on the center back and the center front for stitching allowance so that i won't run short remember we already added hemming and joining allowance for the hemline and waistline respectively while drafting earlier so now the one inch allowance is for the center front and the center back so after marking out the allowance with my chalk next i will get my scissors and start cutting so guys you can decide to spread more as much as you want for your fuller draping please cut it carefully all round i am done cutting and as you can see the shape has changed we've succeeded in eliminating our side seam as you can see it's two so now i will separate the two one for the left side and one for the right side so next we are going to pleat slash gather the center front that's the button area if we pleat this button area and stitch the back this is what it will look like but before that i will quickly draft out the upper part and this is the pattern paper for it first off place it on fold in case you are cutting directly on your fabric i have labeled the fold to indicate that it's on fold this dress has a half length and the upper part is cut together top the half length i am working with is 16 and half i will mark it out and add one inch seam allowance i will shift a little and repeat the same thing next i will mark out half inch seam allowance on the shoulder line area and connect it i will also connect the half length and the joining allowance like this next i will mark out the neckline measurement i am drafting the back pattern first so the back neckline measurement that i'll be using will be three inches for the wideness and one inch for the depth that's three by one next i will connect it with my pattern curve 
after that i will mark out the normal shoulder measurement divided by two 17 divided by two is eight and a half inches and from that eight and a half inches for the shoulder i will place my tape there and mark out where i want my sleeve to stop depending on your desired sleeve length here i marked it at 12 inches 10 inches will be for the sleeve length then the extra two inches will be for the turn up next i will extend the line with my pattern ruler after that i will use this same pattern for the upper front so for the front neckline the wideness is three inches the depth is also three inches that's three by three i will mark it out and connect it with my pattern curve like this i will label f for the front and b for the back next i will mark my shoulder slope this is not compulsory you can decide to leave yours like that but i just like marking out my shoulder slope so i will come down by one inch like this and use my ruler to create slash mark out the line next i will place my tape on the sleeve length and mark out 11 inches for my round sleeve and then mark out a straight line from my sleeve length with my ruler to connect it this 11 inches will also serve as our armhole the armhole I'm working with is nine inches but because it's a free cut together dress i will use the 11 inches as the armhole i just marked this dotted line to indicate that the two inches is for the turn up the next thing i'm going to do i will place my tape on the waistline and mark out the round waist measurement divided by four 32 divided by four is eight inches plus extra five inches making it 13 inches this is because we are going to pleat the waist before joining it to the lower part of this dress that is why i added the extra five inches allowance i will go ahead and extend the lines like this and then connect slash make a curve from the sleeve down to the waistline you can decide to use your pattern curve or a freehand sketch for it so now we've succeeded in drafting both the upper front and back together the back will be unfold while the center front will be opened because of the button i will first cut out the back pattern with the three by one neckline like this so that after tracing the back on the fabric we will cut down the neckline for the front so this is me cutting out the back pattern so guys after cutting it out i will get my fabric place it on fold first as you can see it's on fold after folding place the pattern like this with the place i labeled fold facing the folded side of the fabric you can decide to hold it down with your office pin if it's shifting because we've added every allowance while drafting i will go ahead and carefully cut it out like this after cutting the upper back pattern i will remove the paper shift the already cut fabric place the pattern on the table and cut down the neckline for the front as you can see we already marked it three by three so i will go ahead and cut it out after that i will get my fabric and make sure it's two pieces this is because the front will be opened at the center for the button i have placed it on the fabric and then cut it out all round if yours is folded here please cut it open like this and then cut out every other part after cutting it after cutting it this is what it looks like and as you can see it's open at the center so it's two pieces why the back is just one piece no opening because it's a shirt dress i will place the upper front on it like this one piece this side and the other piece this side it will be pleated at the waist region next i will cut out two long pieces for my belt the two pieces is because i will attach it at the waist region you can decide to sew yours as one piece if you want your belt to be separate so guys back to the skirt part of this dress i will use my chalk and mark an arrow to guide me so as to know the side that i will be pleating to avoid getting confused you can label the waist and the hem area use your chalk and indicate so you don't make mistake so for the draping i will get my office pin and start pleating and securing i left like two and a half inches first before i started pleating upwards now the inches to pleat in totally depends on you 
and on how wide you spread your slashed papers during the cutting. Here I am pleating in one after the other. If I pleat, I pin it down. Make sure to pleat it the way I am pleating it in this video. Pleat it to face towards the waist area and as you pleat, you arrange it as well for a neat finishing. Please guys, take your time and carefully pleat. Pleat it very well before pinning it down. As you can see, it's already taken shape. Getting towards the knee region, in order to check where to close slash top plating, I will get my pattern paper and place it like this. This is to guide me so that I will know exactly where to stop. I will use my chalk like this and mark it visibly enough so that I won't make mistake. After marking it, I will remove it and continue pleating till I get to where we marked the chalk i will then stop pleating to make sure that we didn't alter our gown length measurement this is where that our second pattern paper that i didn't slash comes in get it and carefully place it on your pleated fabric like this and then make sure that it's exactly the same length with the pattern after you must have finished pleating here i am checking mine and as you can see it's the same length for both so i am on the right track in case yours is not the same just use the skirt pattern and either reduce or add your pleats so that the length measurements will rhyme together i am done pleating for this side and it gave what i wanted i will move to the other side and repeat exactly the same thing we did for this other side don't forget to pleat upwards and secure with your office pin as you pleat make sure your pleats are in the same line as you can see i am pleating it close to the other one so that the pleats will be in the same line for a good and neat finishing i will also get this pattern to use it and mark out where my pleat is going to stop after marking i'll take it out and then continue pleating after that i will get this cat pattern and also make sure that it's the same length with the slashed hip line closed so guys i am done pleating and it's giving already so this is how it's going to be i will stitch slash close the center back like this with the half inch we added while cutting i will also run a stitch on the pleats as my index finger is directing i will stitch it down and remove the pins and show you guys later also for the upper part of this dress i will arrange it like this Take it to my sewing machine and stitch down the both shoulder lines like this and show you guys too. Guys, here is the skirt part and I am done drawing a stitch on the pleats and also joining slash stitching the center back and this is what it looks like. This is the wrong side of the fabric. I will just close it like this and turn it to the right side and our skirt part is almost ready. This is what the back looks like too. Very neat this is also the upper part of our dress i have closed the shoulder region already and this is it so next i will fold the sleeve for our turn up but first i will make my first normal fold and it will be like four or three inches wide i will run a stitch on it first this is the other side of the sleeve i will also measure and fold then taking a little like this and run a stitch on it this is what it should look like after running the first normal stitch. Next, I will open up the top like this and then come to the sleeve side and fold it like this. The second fold, you can leave it at one and a half or two inches, depending on how wide you want the turn up to be. After folding it for the second time like this, I will run a stitch at the center and also at the sides. Let me use my pin in place of the stitch and show you guys so that you guys will understand what I'm trying to explain. I will pin this side and this other side too. Then I will move to the other sleeve and repeat the same thing. Remember that the center line is the shoulder line because this is a cut together dress. So guys, this is how it's going to be this is how to make a turn up sleeve i will just take it to my sewing machine stitch down the middle and the two sides and show you guys so guys this is what it looks like this is how to make a turn up sleeve i am done stitching everything here is the first normal stitch if you can remember it's very neat then i turned it again the second time and then stitched the center and the two sides 
so this is the second sleeve i repeated the same thing on it too and as you can see the bolt is very neat the next thing i'm going to do is to join the two sides i will turn to the wrong side of the fabric and stitch this place my index finger is pointing but i won't stitch it all through i will leave space for the two side belts i will leave like two and a half inches or three inches space two inches will be for the belt and then half or one inch will be for the joining allowance that is the allowance for joining it to the skirt part of this dress i am done stitching the sides and leaving the belt space i will turn to the right side of the fabric and this is what it looks like so i will go ahead and use iron to stretch it and make it relaxed please do not forget to iron yours iron it properly especially the cut together side and the armhole region next is to sew the belt but before that i want to quickly show you guys how to go about the waist pleating and the joining i will get the skirt part as you can see it has only back seam i will arrange it properly so as to get the two sides so i will arrange it like this locate the center and from there locate the sides i will notch this side with my scissors locate this other side and notch it with my scissors as well we are notching it so that while joining the up and down the upper side seam will be placed together with the lower side seam which is where we just notched so make sure to cross check to see that the half length is still the same before joining mine is the same i am good to go so i will get my pin and pin it side to side like this and then pleat in the remaining part of the waist area like this after joining the sides together we are going to pleat the remaining part of the top because the waist of the top is wider than the skirt so keep pleating it till it becomes the same length with the skirt waist i believe you guys are following after that you place it this way take it to your sewing machine and stitch it all round then get into the back you are going to either pleat or gather the back waist too pleat it in till it becomes the same length before joining everything together so guys this is how to join the upper part to the skirt part if you want your belt separate close back the belt opening we left earlier join the upper part to the skirt part and then sew your belt separately but for me here is the belt opening we left while joining the sides as you can see i have also pleated the waist area so here is my belt the side i will join to my side seam is two inches wide while the other end is three inches you can decide to make yours more or less than that then for the length i used 38 inches you can decide to make yours longer or shorter this is the second belt for the other side the two belts are the same length so i will just open it up like this and place the belt inside i left half inch you can decide to leave one or half inch for joining allowance and then secure the belt with my office pin i will place the other belt inside and pin it down leaving my joining allowance after that i will cover it like this take it to my sewing machine and stitch down the belt properly this is what it should look like after stitching please do not forget to also pleat or gather the upper back waist till it becomes the same length with the skirt waist i will join it and show you guys i am done joining it guys and this is what it looks like now our dress is formed properly next is to use the one and a half inches we added while drafting to hem the edge of this dress but before that this is the belt I am done stitching it down and it's given already you can tie it to the back or to the front whichever way you want our turn up sleeve is giving everything it should give too please before you hem your gown for the band to be attached at the bottom area we are supposed to attach the band before hemming so i will measure from the neck to the hemline to know the length of the band i am cutting out remember that we did not add the band for button allowance while drafting earlier so i will use the length i measured out now to cut out a band here is a band i cut out two pieces for both sides one for the right and one for the left for the wideness of the band it should be like one and a half inches or two inches on fold like this i have also gone ahead to iron a gum stay to the band you can decide not to your choice I ironed it to the two bands so that the button allowance will stay firm. 
I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch it down by placing the button allowance in between the band like this. You can use the band to fold it, whichever way that works for you. But I'm using this method to achieve a very neat finishing. I am done sewing the button allowance band guys. And as you can see, it's firm and neat. See the inner and the outer parts given already. One will be for button and then the second one will be for the button hole. I will use my iron and press it down. Do not forget to iron yours so that it will relax very well. So next, I will use my tape and measure the round neck for the collar. Please measure your round neck after adding the button allowance because whatever you get around neck is what we will use to get our collar measurement. I will still make a well detailed video on how to draft and sew a shirt collar. So guys, please subscribe to this channel and on your notification bell very important so that whenever i post the video on how to make a shirt collar you will be the first to be notified this is because our video is long already so i will kind of rush the collar making process i got 18 inches at the round neck measurement i will divide it by two which will be nine inches so first is to place your paper on fold then mark out the nine inches like this I will place my tape like this for the collar stand and mark out one and a half inches. Then use my ruler and make a straight line for the collar stand and connect it. Next, I will go in by one inch from the center of the collar and mark it out. From there, I will come up by two inches for the reveal collar. I will mark the two inches and then rule a straight line like this. Then from this one inch here, I will connect it to the end of the two inches we marked earlier and then slightly make a curve from the one inch like this. Next, I will place my tape and come up by half inch at the center front here and then slightly curve it inwards like this. I will also come up by half inch at the center back and then slightly curve it inwards like this also. Next, I will go ahead and cut out my collar. And I will divide my collar into two. We have the collar stand and the normal collar. So to cut it out on our fabric, I will be cutting two pieces for each of them. I have placed my fabric on fold. I will place my collar like this and mark out half inch all round for seam allowance. After marking it out, I will go ahead and cut it out. I will repeat the same thing for the collar stand by leaving half inch seam allowance all round and then cut it out as well. After the cutting, I will cut out another one that will serve as lining. So here I will just fold my fabric and use this one to trace out another one for the collar and the collar stand. So now as you can see, we have four pieces, two, two. I have iron gum stay, to the two that will serve as lining so next i will start with the river collar i will place it like this take it to my sewing machine and then use that half inch we added to stitch where my index finger is directing so here i am done closing it i close the both sides and the top and then left this side because we will join it to the collar stand so i will just turn it to the right side from here use your scissors and push out the pointy part and give it a very good press after pressing it i will get the collar stand i have iron gum stay to the one that will serve as lining so i will be using this collar stand to turn the reveal collar and to achieve this first i will locate the center and notch it and also locate the collar center and place them center to center like this with the reveal collar at the center get the other side of the collar stand and place it on the two and i will take it to my sewing machine and stitch this place my index finger is directing guys i'm done stitching it and this is what it looks like i will notch the edge and then go ahead to turn it Feel free to stretch and straighten it with your pressing iron. After ironing it, I will get the dress, mark out the center back neck with chalk. Locate the center back and mark it out with chalk. Also locate the collar center and stitch it down. But first, I will secure with office pin all round and then use the inner one to close and cover it like this before the final stitching this is it guys i am done joining the collar to the dress and it came out very neat and fine see the back very fine 
I will mark out where I want my button to be. You can fix and give 3 inches gap for the buttons or you can decide to give 2.5 inches gap. After tacking the button, you create your button hole and that is it. You can tie the belt to the front side or to the back like this, anyhow you want it. Guys, please give this video a thumbs up if this was helpful. Drop a nice comment, share this video with your friends and subscribe. This is our Facebook group. Check out the link that just appeared at the top right of your screen to join. Or you check for it in the description box later. Please follow our social media pages. I will link it up for you guys in the description box as well. Click on this picture to subscribe now. Thank you guys so much for watching till now. Please subscribe and share this video and also drop a nice comment. See you guys in my next video. Bye.